The following is a presentation of the Eagles Sports Network. Hello and welcome into week nine of the Mike Clowney Show as Carson Newman celebrates a happy homecoming with a 37-7 victory over the Emory and Henry Wasps. I'm Adam Cavalier alongside Carson Newman head football coach Mike Clowney. Mike, I bought a can of Raid on Saturday. Uh, all three phases, very complimentary football. Uh, I think the worst thing that happened Saturday that was, was that the elevator to the press box broke down 90 minutes before kickoff. You didn't know about that one, did you? <laughs> I said, well, the elevator was messed up. And I was like, well, I'm debating on whether I should get in there. Three Eagle Sports Network staffers were stuck in it. Uh, and uh, we, we, we nearly made some interesting things. But that was the worst thing that happened on Saturday. Uh, and that was a, uh, I suppose, a, it was not a harbinger uh, of doom. Uh, Man, what a good game. Uh, what a good game. What a good crowd. Uh, great to have the alumni back. Uh, just all around uh, sum up uh, what amounted to uh, a very warm, uh, but uh, quality win over the Wasps. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was a good day. The weather was perfect. Um, went homecoming and get to see a lot of different people here. You know, I know a lot of the guys I played with from mm -hmm. the 90s team were probably creating all kind of chaos on the deck up here. <laughs> um, that's what my wife was like, I can hear some of them all in the stands. And so, um, but I, I think they had a good time um, just being here and, and, and being, just being back on campus. But, you know, overall, I think the thing that, you know, to me that always brings homecoming together is being able to win the football game. You know, I, I, I was impressed with, with our guys and the way they played. You know, when you look at the game, you know, I felt like, you know, that was a game to where we won all three phases of the game, you know, offense, defense, and kicking. Uh, Outgamed Emory and Henry 2-1. to one. Emory and Henry only had three first downs in the first half. And if you took away uh, up until their last drive of the game, uh, with under a minute left, they ran two rushing plays for 12 yards. If you had taken away two big pass plays that they hit earlier, you held them under 100 yards of offense. Uh, on the day. Let's focus on the defense first. Uh, aggressive. Uh, Charles Mutter, the third, and Marine Henry's quarterback, never got comfortable. What did it take to to keep them off, keep their run pass option off balance uh, and never find its footing? You know, I think the big thing is our guys up front, I thought they did a really good job of controlling the line of scrimmage. You know, the key with that whole run pass offense, especially the way they run it is, it, all those things kind of take time to develop. Yeah. You know, I thought our guys went in went went the line of scrimmage, um, kind of forced them to have to try to make some reads and things a little bit faster than they probably really want to make them. And so then I think the back end, our guys did a good job of just kind of holding on and giving the guys up front, you know, that little extra time to be able to get there to create some confusion um, and force him to have to give some balls that he may have wanted to throw. And then also just when he threw the ball, just to kind of force him to have to kind of speed that process up a little bit. The, uh, we talked about it a little bit last week. Uh, aggressive keeps coming to mind uh, to describe Carson Newman football. Is this just the, the natural process and maturation uh, of this team, especially defensively? You know, I think that's what we talk about all week, and it's kind of get to that point. The big thing we talk about, like developing a mindset, we talk about owning the field, you know, being aggressive in, in how you call and how you play. And, you know, like the beginning point of that is guys have to know what to do and, and, and know how to execute. You know, I think now guys are getting to the point they're a little bit more comfortable in their assignments, which allows them to play faster, play a little bit more aggressive. Uh, once again, win the toss, defer. Uh, <laughs> uh, your predecessors uh, did not often do this, but it is uh, yeah, another week. You get a three and out. This time, seven points on the board on the opening possession. Uh, with then a chance, which you pulled off later, you went two for one, uh, sandwiched around the, the, the halftime break. Uh, 
just how critical were those opening stages to let your defense set a tone and then uh, the offense takes a short field set up by Major Williams to go down and score. You know, it was funny listening to them talking about this week and then right before the game, bringing that second half energy to the beginning of the game. And so, you know, I thought, you know, they were able to do that with defense getting the stop. You know, Major gets the punt return to put us right at midfield for us to go score, get another stop and go score, you know, to where we've done that in, in the first half, you know, come out and put 14 on the board quick. But now instead of playing catch up, it allows you to get, get ahead. Carson Newman football triumphs over Emory and Henry, 37 to seven on homecoming. And we break down the first half when we get back after these messages on the Mike Clowney Show. Sure, we've been around a while, 171 years to be exact. We know the power of a liberal arts-based Christian education and the tremendous potential of what can be found on this campus, within this community. We are adventurers, dreamers, believers, passionate and compassionate, curious and clever, driven by a common purpose towards a common goal. I found my passion. I found purpose. We are Carson Newman. What will you find? All right, back to the Mike Clowney Show as Carson Newman collects a 37-7 Week 9 victory over the Emory and Henry Wasps on homecoming. I'm Adam Cavalier alongside head football coach Mike Clowney. Uh, Mike, uh, a first half, much like the game, uh, dominant. And you did it with sensational balance. Uh, Gash plays on the ground. Gash plays through the air. Uh, we talk about complementary football. It felt like your running attack set, set up your passing attack, which set up your running attack, uh, which set up your passing attack. How critical were those two phases in conjunction with one another? They're, they're vital that they, they work together. I thought, you know, we started out being able to ground the ball pretty good. You know, I thought Tyree Nelson did a good job in the game again of being able to ground out some, some tough yards, keeping his feet moving. You know, he ran hard with great energy, you know, and then when you had that success running the football, I mean, we as coaches feel like you have to fix that, so you start doing things to, to – you either bring a guy in the box or he starts being undisciplined and bringing himself down there, which then can create opportunities for you on the back end. That's where a couple of passes we had guys wide open just because, you know, you got that guy trying to fit the box a little bit quicker than he should. And so it's, that's why, to me, like you always the, – the running game is so vital um, and having that success in the running game early. Uh, Big plays all the way around. Uh, not too many games I can think of through the years where you have a guy rush the ball for uh, fewer than 100 yards, but then go over 100 yards of total offense because of what he did in the passing game. Uh, you mentioned Tyree Nelson. He did that. Jaden Sullins also uh, did that. He had five passing plays longer than 20 yards. Uh, and, 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 and how uh, hadn't hit the big play a ton. Uh, this year, you move the ball efficiently, but uh, chunk yardage plays haven't been uh, a massive part of the offense. Why did that work out the way it did on Saturday? You know, one thing that we talked about all week is details. Um, and then details, basically we talked about it equals discipline. You know, you, when you know the details, the discipline and being able to do it is, is what's vital. And as our guys get a little bit more comfortable with what they're doing, then they're able to understand the difference. I mean, an inch in football it can be a lot. You know, being from, you know, outside shoulder to inside shoulder, you know, it's a difference in you being open and crossing the guy's face and him running through your body. And so I think our guys are starting to see some of those details and why you coach it the way you coach it, you know, which has presented some opportunities for them to be able to make plays. Uh, you've been dinged up in, in your receiving core. Uh, throughout this season, but uh, a couple freshmen continue to to impact the game in major ways, and Jerron Newson and, and Jeremiah Carroll. What have you seen from those two uh, to get a fair amount of playing time in their first years uh, here at Carson Newman? You know, Jerron, the only reason he hadn't played a ton is that he got hurt. I mean, he started the first game for us and is just now really getting back, played a week with pretty much a cast on as a receiver. Um, you know, he's a guy that, that showed up to camp and just with unbelievable focus. Um, just, I mean, just part of his story, just kind of showing up here three days early, with, just looking for an opportunity. Yeah. And then just trying to do everything he can do to take and make the most of that opportunity. Jeremiah, um, a great catcher across the middle, and he's kind of continued to grow and develop. 
you know, we've got a freshman class here that we think has the potential, especially with a lot of our guys being juniors now. Mm -hmm. You know, and you see a lot of these freshmen that's mixing in and playing that these guys will have an opportunity to kind of turn that gavel over to, I think gives us a chance to, to be special in the stretch. You, uh, you talked when you uh, were hired about getting old and staying old. And uh, you have used, I, I don't want to say the transfer portal aggressively, but it, it, has, it felt like you used it to, to patch holes in the wall. Uh, but slowly, You've been laying bricks <laughs> uh, up to those holes. Not to say that you don't want to take transfers, but uh, it feels like this team is slowly but surely uh, aging uh, like a fine Italian cheese. I mean, it's that was you know, it's just like having having a plan is so important, and you know, a part of our, our the plan has been you know let's let's try to get as old as we can as long as we can. And, you know, we, we, we didn't have a choice but to, to go into the transfer yeah. portal and get some older guys. And that's where you see a lot of the grad guys that, that, that we brought in. And, and they, they've done a great job for us, you know, coming in and continue to help us develop and mature. You know, and then that's where we talked about also on the bottom end, being able to, to bring those freshmen in and, and give them opportunity. That's like none of them want to do this, but it's so critical. Um, you know, sometimes that's why we do adults. None of them want to sit the bench. None of them want a red shirt. None of them want to like take time. But like that's you know that that's that's what this whole thing's about. You know, so that they can play their best football as long as possible. And you know, you can certainly do it. You know, as a freshman, which you can. We're talking about those two guys have an opportunity to do right now. You know, I think there's some other guys that we haven't put on the field that's got that same potential that we still got to continue to grow and develop. Carson Newman gets the job done over Emory and Henry. Eagles led at the half, 27 to nothing. And here are the first half highlights. Major Williams stands at his own 11. Low snap, Muncie gets it. Turns over a spiral that Williams will leap to field at his six. Williams to the right, he's across the 15. Cut back lane to the 20. Williams breaks free. He's across the 30 and 40. Heading to the left sideline. Williams across midfield. He tries to hurdle. And does. Williams still alive to the 45, reversing back to the left, back to the right. He's caught at midfield over the numbers left side. And that return at long last comes to a close from the Emory and Henry 47. Whitson takes, back to pass, going to dump it into the flat right side. Nelson, he's got the first down across the 40. Hurdles a man inside the 35, and he sidesteps out of bounds down at the 25-yard line. Nelson to the right for first and goal from the two. Snap comes back, give Nelson left side. Nelson burrowing, he's in. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Tyree Nelson, second rushing touchdown this season. Goes off left guard and submarines his way into the end zone to give the Eagles a 6-0 lead with eight minutes and change to go in the first quarter. Abshire and Peoples to the wide side right, Zell to the short side left, hand off Anderson right side, pursued by Ja'Cory Long, pursued by Major Williams, and Major cuts him down two yards deep in the backfield, back at the 29 yard line. Whitson out of the gun, takes the snap, gives Nelson straight ahead. Nelson surging forward, steps through a Lundy tackle, he's across the 40, but splitting the hashes and gets all the way up to the 44 yard line before he's ridden down from behind back at the nine. Whitson out of the gun, will fake the handoff to Curtis. Whitson wants to go long, double move, throws to the right sideline. Jeremiah Carroll goes up, pulls it in in Emory and Henry territory in the boundary right side down at the 36 yard line. Second down, six to go for Carson Newman from the Wasp 32. Give Curtis straight ahead. Curtis kicks it to the 30 and 25. Cur 25. Curtis clear sailing in front of him. Curtis outraces everybody to the end zone. Touchdown, Carson Newman. 32 yards for Tyler Curtis, who kicked down the door at the line of scrimmage and then rambled his way the final 25 yards down the left sideline for the score. Third and one for the Wasp. Left hash at their own 34. Give to Anderson. Left side, he didn't get it. Stops for no gain by Champ Baker and Jake Cottle. Whitson brings a man in motion. Pearson, the give is to Nelson straight ahead. Picks his way forward. Nelson, good surge. He's across the 30. He's across the 35, splitting the hashes. And brought down by Robinson up at the 38-yard line. Right, Washington Newson to the wide side left. 
Whitson takes play fake, rolls left, now scrambles back to the right. Whitson airs long, wide open, at the goal line! Touchdown, Carson Newman! Jerron Newson, start naked along the goal line on the right side of the end zone. Whitson finds him, Newson plucks it out of the sky. It's a 31-yard hookup, and the Eagles have a three-score lead, 20 to nothing with 10.58 to go in the second quarter. From the Eagle, 31. Butter out of the gun. Will pump, get hit, and sacked. Back at the 34-yard line. Martavis Mason. goes for eight yards. Now it's second and two for the Wasps. Handoff straight ahead. English, English smashed in the backfield, and he loses yardage back to the 15-yard line. Let's push the middle of the field now. Safeties are creeping up again. Play fake to Sullins. Whitson back to pass. Going to air long. Cade Meeks splitting the hashes. Meeks hauls it in at the 10. Meeks houses it. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Thank you, Karnak. David needs. Eagles dial up the post. 27 to nothing on the 52 yard completion from Whitson to Cade Meeks. 80 seconds left in the second quarter. Mutter in the gun with Anderson to his left. Mutter takes, straight drop, pressure, hit, sacked. Mutter overwhelmed. Martavis Mason again. Third and six for the Wasps, left hash at their own 38. Mutter back to pass, steps up in the pocket. He is strip sack. Anderson will pick it up. Anderson trying to hurdle Kendall Williams. He will not do that. And Williams breaks into the turf. All right, those are the first half highlights. Eagles up by four scores at the halftime break. Uh, Mike Clowney, what was your uh, halftime message to your team? You know, zero, zero. I mean, it's the same <laughs> halftime message that, that we've had. Um, and, and going back out, and then the, the big thing for our guys, you know, like being where we were with the lead. You know, I remember two weeks ago waking up to the Colorado game at the lead, mm. 29 to nothing. You know, so the, the football game's never over. You know, the thing that we still have to do is be able to go back and perform. And probably the most disappointed I've been it was in this game was we come back out and we give up a score and we don't get one. Yeah. Um, you know, that's where you just kind of like go back and take the field, you know, on the field. And in that moment, you know, you got a chance to probably really put that football game away. And I thought our guys did a good job, you know, after those two series to kind of come back and put us back in control of the football yeah. game. Yeah, when, the only time he went three and out um, in that game was on that opening drive uh, of the second half. Uh, not a ton of low points uh, in the Emory and Henry game, but that comes to mind. A muffed uh, PAT snap comes to mind and an interception come to mind. But outside of that, uh, fairly clean game. Yep. Did, what, what did you see uh, from your team to respond to those miscues this week? You know, I think. They, just, they, you're starting to see some of the maturity on, on the team. That's just like, you know, when us as coaches didn't have to address it. And then you just hearing a couple of our guys like, come on, guys, like that ain't it, you know. And then them being able to go back out that next series and respond with the effort and intensity that we needed to kind of push the needle. Uh, you alluded to Tyree Nelson earlier in the show. Uh, he has had a sensational two weeks. Uh, really, after uh, a fumble against Erskine uh, on a kickoff return. Uh, he has played his best football this season. What have you seen from uh, your all-conference running back? He, when Tyree is on, he is really good. And the thing that you see is like he, there's there's an aggressive nature and focus. You know when he's playing at his best. I know he had one run on the sidelines where he comes off, he goes to stiff arm a guy, and like you like Tyree, you know, like <laughs> but like just but that you want that. And then, but when the ball goes out of bounds, the whistle stops, then just go back out and play that next play. And just being able to see him bring that energy and effort um, to the football game, you know, when you see that look in his face on the sideline, then there's no doubt, you know, why he's been successful in between the lines. 
then that's something that like that's where we can go back to you know you talk about that aggressive mentality and mindset of, you know, of growing that developing that and then taking taking ownership in it Carson Newman prevails over Emory and Henry on homecoming 37 to 7 we break down the second half when we get back after these messages this is the Mike Clowney show Back on the Mike Clowney Show as Carson Newman triumphs 37-7 on homecoming over Emory and Henry in Week 9. I'm Adam Cavalier, the voice of the Eagles, alongside Carson Newman head football coach Mike Clowney. Mike, second half defensively, again, we've, we've touched on that, but uh, uh, put the clamps down the, on the Wasps after halftime, but did it with some guys who hadn't been the ones, I suppose, that have really shown up on the box score and the one that certainly comes to mind is Martavis Mason. Uh, a two tackle for loss game, a two sack game. Uh, he has played significantly this season as a freshman, uh, but this was a breakout game for him. What did you see from your, your, your freshman interior lineman? Um, that's what like when Martavis we talk about the freshman on offense. Yeah. You know, he's a guy that's played consistently all year. You know, it's kind of been in the mix and making some plays, but, you know, was kind of able to kind of really get himself on the stat sheet this week. But I think, you know, the thing that you love about him is really kind of what we talked about Tyree. You know, he's a freshman that comes in. He, he's locked in, it, you know, for the most part every day. You know, he's not doing a whole lot of playing around. He takes coaching well. And, you know, like he's been able to take that coaching, you know, from Coach Jameson, Coach Ashley, you know, over these last few weeks, you know, if he can continue to grow in that phase of his life, um, I think he has a chance to be a special player. Uh, special teams has been an up and down journey at times uh, this season. Unquestionably an up on, uh, on Saturday. Uh, Major Williams, uh, this was his breakout game last year, returning punts. Uh, didn't have a ton of opportunities uh, on uh, on Saturday, s several punts out of bounds, but uh, his first one uh, flipped field. How nice was it to see him back uh, in the saddle in that regard, I suppose. It was good. He had to return against Newberry this year, but yeah. then other than that, you know, trying to, you know, get some of the balls field where got people are kicking away from him. You know, I know that's been stressful for him, but, you know, the, the return that he had to be able to catch that ball and, you know, get a block and get it back down the sideline. And, you know, I think when we all thought it was kind of dead and going mm -hmm. and he pops back out of there and he's running again, you know, and I thought that was something that, that, that you know, sparked, sparked our entire football team because you really don't know where that game's going to go early in the game. Uh, Andrew Seibert, uh, by the skin of his teeth, a 49-yard field goal, uh, buried one. Uh, buried one. Uh, you haven't taken a ton of field goals this year, haven't taken a ton of uh, – Three pointers. I thought initially that he was lining up for a punt uh, from again the 32, only then to see Jackson Martin run out there and and, and take a kneel, uh, take a knee to, to set set up to hold. Uh, break down his maturation as a, a field goal kicker, something that. Uh, I don't think anybody expected out of him uh, on August 30th. You know, that's what we talked about. I guess it was last week. You know, he come here to punt, and then we get all these injuries, like, from kickers, and so we had to convert him into a field goal kicker. Um, you know, Christian was back yeah. this week, and that's where we kind of see, like, how strong his leg is. It's funny, like, a lot of our guys on the team hadn't seen Christian kick. Mm -hmm. So they're like, Coach, where that dude been? <laughs> you know, right, he's been hurt. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, having him back on, on kickoffs was, was something that's good. And, like, knowing we're getting him back. And, um, but just watching them compete during the week. And, you know, Andrew did a good job of getting the ball through the uprights. And that's why I look at Coach Gossam like, this is a long one. Who are we going to go with? He likes cyber. <laughs> <laughs> and um, because he's done a lot better job the last three weeks of, of getting the ball up. You know, we haven't kicked field goals, which I guess has given him a lot of time to just practice and gain confidence. And, you know, he gets that opportunity and he nails it. Uh, the, uh, the fourth quarter gave you an opportunity to play a lot of guys. Uh, as I think it, 
tells the tale of this season uh, that you look out there for some of those later drives. All right, Mason Brang's getting run at quarterback. Uh, you're seeing Nate Adebayo at, at running back. Daniel Moore is getting some run at wide receivers, some guys that you haven't seen a ton of this year. But then you look at the offensive line, and then you've got three starter, starters out there, guys that have been forced into service at positions uh, that they um, – might not have been playing originally at the start of the year, but uh, it, I think your injuries showed up potentially in a good way, I guess, yeah. <laughs> up front that, hey, it's late in the game, but uh, some starters are still out there on, on that offensive not line. Not a lot of guys put in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're already out there. <laughs> uh, break, that, break down that, that group. You know, uh, it's they, like they, even with Brian, you know, like Brian's been battling some injuries. He's kind of working his way back. You know, he started every football game, but the last two fours, you know, he he's out there in the game, you know. Yeah. And um, you, you prefer not to have him out there, but you got him out there in a good situation, you know, as far as where this is concerned. You know, Tyler Needs gets a chance yeah. to, to get in the game. Um, Dason Renew, guy we brought in that, you know, has, has got to continue to work and develop, but, you know, he gets in the game, be able to get, some, get a look at him on film because he was hurt early in the year. And so, like, you know, like, whew, we're sitting there, like, that was the biggest conversation we had is how to handle those guys to try to make sure that we can get them the next week and then also finish that football game. Uh, it touched on some of those earlier names. Mason Bryant completes his first career pass. Nate Adebayo runs hard uh, down the stretch. How gratifying is it to see some guys who unquestionably mean a lot to this program, and Mason Bryant certainly comes to mind as uh, the next in a long line of great uh, – glue guy quarterbacks in the mold of a Tyson Heron or a, a clear you can clearly you can go on and do great things Goose Manning the head coach at Ottawa uh, uh, guys that have uh, committed themselves to this program for a long time and uh, now Mason in Mason's case a little success on the field yeah Mason Mason's uh you know sort of last at yeah, the interview after the game that's where we talked about just kind of like who he is you know just a solid kid steady Eddie kid he, he, he goes down there, he leads the scout team. You know, I think we've taken him to every football game, mm -hmm. you know, since, since he's been here. And it's the first time that he gets an opportunity to throw a pass. Like, you know, he, he is a Mr. Carson Newman type guy, um, just solid all-around person. And, and we love Mason, man, and just, just grateful to have had the opportunity to coach him. And just it was fun being able to watch him be in the game, control the game. And so I'm watching our other guys kind of rally behind because of, of what he means to them. And then Nate, you know, Nate's the guy competed, was able to play a little bit early, probably hadn't gotten the, the burn that, that, that he liked late once some of these other guys kind of come back off of injury. But to be able to get him back in the game, that's where some of the defensive guys were like, man, I was kind of hoping that that drive would stall out so we could play more guys on defense. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm glad it didn't. But, you know, you do want to kind of, you know, in those games be able to get – you know, as many guys as involved as possible. You know, we got a bunch of guys that play special teams for us. Like we call, you know, Coach Cox calls them his core unit. You know, those are the guys that don't play a lot of offense and defense, but they're on every special team. And you want to be able to kind of see the, like a lot of those guys get in and, and play the position that they work at every single day. And so because we were able to kind of keep that drive going, <laughs> we weren't able to substitute as many of those guys in as we wanted to defensively. But, you know, hopefully we'll give ourselves the opportunity to do that, you know, again. I, it, it was vintage Carson Newman football in the fourth quarter. You played keep away uh, for about the final seven minutes and change of that game before you did have to give the ball back to Emory and Henry for two plays. But uh, not much better for Carson Newman football to grind out the final half of the quarter uh, without giving the, the, the opponent a true opportunity to – have a chance to get back in the game. Yep. You know, being able to do that, that's why I say you keep down chaos. You know, all of a sudden you, you, you still got this game going back and forth. If if they can throw a ball in the end zone, score a touchdown, and then you get an onside kicks and it just creates a chaotic environment. So being able to run the football and, and kill the fourth quarter, um, it, I, I'm, I'm sure I'm, I'm glad we're able to do that. Carson Newman prevails on homecoming 37 to 7 over Emory and Henry. And here are those second half highlights. Between the hashes from the Eagles 7. Butter takes, gonna throw quickly, flat right side. That's complete to Abshire, and Abshire strolls in. He beat his man to the pylon, touchdown Wasps. 
Whitson from the gun. Takes the snap, hands off Sullins straight ahead. Sullins bursts through the line. Sullins, a hurl across the 45, picks up a block to the 40. He's into Emory and Henry territory and shoved out of bounds by Addison nicely. Just kidding, from 49 yards, snap back, cold down, Seibert's kick on the way, Seibert's kick, sneaky. Why? No, it's in! Andrew Seibert hits it! How about that? Andrew Seibert from 49. Third and 12 from the 50, Mutter back to pass. Pressured up the middle by Kendall Williams, escapes to the right. Mutter hit by Williams and Makai to Brown. Mutter bound for the turf. Whitson, play fake to Curtis, back to pass. Rinse right, gonna air long. Wants the long ball to Jaden Sullins. Sullins races under it at the 25. Tight roping inside the five, and he is shoved out of bounds by Can. Actually stepped out before the five. Davis the tight end in motion. Snap back, give Kurt to Maddox right side. Maddox hurls a man and is into the end zone. Touchdown, Carson Newman. All James Maddox does when he touches the football is score touchdowns. Out of the gun. Takes the snap, hand off to Paul, left side. Paul smashed as he hits the line of scrimmage and he stopped from getting the first down at the 20 yard line. That is the end of the ball game. All right, those are the second half highlights from Carson Newman's 37 to seven homecoming win over Emory and Henry. Talent Talk headed your way next when we get back after these messages on the Mike Clowney Show. Trilight is proud to support Carson Newman Athletics. We salute the student athletes who are working hard to make great things happen on the field, in the classroom, and in the world. It takes vision, commitment, and teamwork, qualities we share at Trilight. Our mission is to provide life-changing opportunities by building a world-class fiber broadband network. If you'd like to learn more, please visit trilight.net or call us at 833-847-0824. All right, back on the Mike Clowney Show is Carson Newman triumphant in its homecoming win over Emory and Henry, 37-7. Time now for this week's Talent Talk, and Andrew Rogers walks the field with Justin Triplett. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Talent Talk. Andrew Rogers here with Justin Triplett. Justin, let's begin our walk. Uh, you're from Lilburn, Georgia. Tell me about your hometown. Uh, it's a very small hometown, very athletically based. Um, obviously, Parkview Baseball is probably one of the biggest names in the nation. I started with baseball and then made my way to football. Now I'm here. What's been the biggest adjustment when you moved here to Jefferson City five years ago? Um, obviously, it's a little smaller than my hometown, and my hometown is pretty smaller. But um, I just love like the community, the family base of what we're about, the God, God based, um, and just being able to find guys that are like from your area, from even we got guys from California this year. So it's it's just a blessing, really. How do you think you have changed as a person? Um. Obviously, I've matured. I got here, I was 17 years old when I first got here. And, you know, you just learn the ways of being a man. Like, you're gonna run into some obstacles, you're gonna run into maybe even like some hardships with school or anything, you gotta learn how to balance it. And yeah, I've learned that. Motion, handoff goes to Stewart straight ahead. He's hit at the line of scrimmage and dropped. Justin Triplett. I'll change it up on you here. Um, uh, a couple fun questions. If you were to leave this interview, go to your car, and you see a lottery ticket for a million dollars on the ground, what are you first doing? Ooh. Probably buying my dream car. What is it? Um, right now, it switches up a little bit. I really like Hellcats. I'm a fast, like fast car. Mm -hmm. So I like uh, Dodge Durango's. That's okay. probably what I go with right now. Uh, favorite artist or favorite song? Favorite artist? I think, so me and Jaheim Wilson, we're probably two of the biggest Rod Wave fans out right now. Me, Jaheim, and Jordan. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll probably go with him and then probably the top song by him right now is Great Gatsby. We be singing it all the time <laughs> in the locker room. We love that song. And yeah, that's what Nobody I Nobody else joins in with you? 
Nah, some people try to hate on Rod Wave a little bit. Some people think he's a little sad, but I just think it's like some real things that people need to hear, and that's why I love him. Uh, going back to your football career now, uh, over the course of five seasons, you've played nearly 50 total games, or 40 total games. Uh, what do you credit your availability to always being there uh, on the field with the guys? Um, really the trainer room. Um, they've, they've helped us in many ways. They give us ways to recover, even stuff to do away from the facility so that we can work on our bodies and just stay, because the, the best ability is availability. So. I've always taken that and even when I'm at home, I'm doing something constantly, stretching, anything. How would, how would you say you have developed the most football-wise and as a person over the course of your five years? Football-wise, I'd say obviously with just getting the snaps, you get the experience. Obviously, I always say like your eyes have to get experience at the college level because it's way faster, people are way stronger, way more agile, and yeah, there you go. Justin, I enjoyed the walk. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Thanks. That's Justin Triplett. I'm Andrew Rogers on another episode of Talent Talk. All right. Thank you very much, Andrew Rogers, Mike Clowney, Justin Triplett. One of those guys that has uh, you got just a handful of them that has been around forever uh, and a day. Just how much has he meant to this program? Uh, a 20 game starter now uh, on the defensive line and one of the few guys who played last decade that's still on the team. <laughs> that's where I you sit in the line. Yeah, he, he came in here. He, I'm like, he was here when I was running back as coach. And there's not a whole lot of those guys that's left. I'm like, most of those guys, we call them Papaw for some kind of reason. He's, a, <laughs> he's escaped that title. But, um, man, Justin's just, just a great guy. Um, and it's been fun watching him. He's been a consistent kid since he's been here. Um, that's for like from an academic point standpoint, like he, you know, he's always kind of been, you know, on top of things. Um, him, he and his family, it's always fun watching them interact, you know, at the end of the football games. But um, Triplett, man, just kind of being able to show some leadership, you know, in the defensive line room to help a lot of those guys. You know, that's really kind of that same era mm -hmm. of guys, like, and he's kind of emerged as the leader, kind of helping those guys continue to grow and develop. And it's just been, it's just been an honor to be able to coach him. Turn your attention to the last road game uh, of the year. You head over to Carl Smith Stadium to take on UVA Wise. Always a tough place to play. Uh, one of the frequent earlier kick times in the South Atlantic Conference, uh, UVA Wise uh, will go at noon on, uh, on Saturday. What do you have to get ready for a Highland Cavaliers team that has uh, probably a little bit better than their, their record would show this season? You know, they're a good football team. I've watched a, a lot of them you know, this past week. And they do a good job offensively every year, just kind of being able to, with the tempo and different things that they do, um, putting the ball in the air, you know, defensively, they, they're always, you know, running around hard, competitive. You know, the thing that we've got to do is like, same thing that we've done every other week is we've got to continue to grow and develop within ourselves, um, be able to continue to, to stack good days, be able to put more of them together than we did this week, and just, you know, continue our growth. Mike Clowney, pleasure as always. Congratulations on the nice, Homecoming win over the Wasps. It's Carson Dimon head football coach Mike Clowney. I'm the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier. This has been the Mike Clowney Show. Thanks for watching.